Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to do Bible journaling in the Illustrating Bible. If you'd like to see more about this Bible, I do a walkthrough and some testing and things in it in another video that will be linked at the end of this video. Today's project is for the Be Thankful For Challenge all throughout the month of November, doing a different thing every day to remind myself of what I'm thankful for. And today it's seasons. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens from Ecclesiastes 3.1 is what I'm going to be creating today. And I've opened to the scripture and laid these leaves from my yard out on the page. And I've chosen three different size leaves, but I'm gonna mix up the colors on them because I wanna do four seasons, kind of. It's not really gonna be literally four seasons because then I would need a green leaf for spring and a green for summer. So I'm gonna do a green, a yellow, a red, and then snowflakes for that progression, just kind of in a wash, very loose watercolor wash across the page. And starting out, of course, by drawing the leaves on there and I'm layering them a little bit on top of each other so they have some overlap because I want it to just feel like all the seasons are morphing from one to the other because I don't know about where you live but sometimes the seasons are a little slow in making the change around here but I do love the seasons and and having that change I know there are some places where people have just one season kind of all year long or sometimes two seasons and I've always been blessed to live in places where there's a distinct spring, fall, winter, and summer every year. And I just love it. I'm a sweater girl, so I love the fall season when the sweaters start to come out and then nesting in the winter time and that sort of thing. So lots of fun. I'm throwing a bunch of different colors into the leaf shape and just keeping it really loose. Now I got too much of this red on there, so I went and found a baby wipe to try to dab off some of that color. I couldn't get the baby wipe down into the stem, so I just put a little bit more water from my brush on it and then was able to lift some of that up and then start kind of moving the color around. When I'm painting on top of the scripture words, I tend to try to do less contrast. So don't go too too much from super dark to super light because that's what makes the text unreadable. If it's all kind of a soft mid-tone, even if it goes from one hue to the other, it's still fairly readable. But as I said in my original video, talking about this particular Bible, the font in this Bible is supposed to be eight point, and it, I'm sure that it is if they say it is. However, it's a condensed font. There's several Bibles that I have that have a condensed font. I think they're just trying to keep the page count down. So they squish the horizontal on it so they're, you know, the letters are smaller or the font they've chosen is more condensed. And then they've also condensed the space between the lines. So this Bible is not overly readable for me anyway because I'm getting older, my eyes are having more issues, I've got some pre-cataracts going on, and I'm going to stick with the reading in my regular Bible, which is much more readable for me. So it's helpful for me to have something with a little bit of an easier time with seeing the, the words and things. So with this big leaf, I'm adding some reds and oranges and I can get more intense and contrasty with the color since it's in the area that's not on top of the scriptures. And then I'm going to add some blue and purple in the outside edge because that's where my snow is going to be. And I've put a sheet of computer paper underneath of it just to catch it so the color doesn't go draining down the side of my Bible. Ask me how I know that that might happen. And I was loving the way that all of this is washy. The leaves kind of are on top of each other and they morph into each other. And I thought, let me just put some more color around each one of them and create something even looser and more washy than what I had in the first place. So I'm adding more of the green and the yellows and just making this whole swash across the page. And I'll add some definition to it later on. That green leaf on the right has kind of disappeared, but I'll definitely add some more to it to give it a little bit more final definition. Once all that 
initial watercoloring was done, I ironed it and put a sheet of computer paper on top and below when I do my ironing. And next up is some white pen work. And I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I have some loose edges on my watercolor and I'm not following the edges exactly, just kind of making some scribbly outlines for the leaves. And you may find that your watercoloring makes you happy enough, you don't even need to do that. But I'm adding some snowflakes for the final season, just kind of randomly in a few places along that purple and blue section at the outside and the color there needed to be dark enough that the white pen would show up, but I left it really soft. So it was just a tone on tone kind of a look rather than anything kind of too crazy. For some of the interior leaves, the outlines had disappeared a bit. So I'm just going to paint over them a slight bit more to add some more color and more definition to just one edge. I love when watercolor kind of comes and goes. It has one hard edge that that is very clear and then just slowly disappears and melts into something else and you can do that with lifting with a baby wipe that kind of thing and ironing in between just make sure you don't iron too much for very long over top of any gel pen because gel pen will melt I think it's some kind of acrylic in the gel pens so you just want to be very careful when you do that or else whatever is on top when you put a piece of paper on top and you iron then it might melt into that paper and then you'll have issues getting it unstuck. Don't ask me how I know that. In adding my text, I got out a black micron pen to do the lettering and decided I wanted to personalize the verse because I could have just taken some of the words from the scripture itself in Ecclesiastes 3, but I decided to choose something that speaks to where I am in my life right now. And it is a time of growth right now. God is stretching me and asking me to do things that I have no idea what I'm doing. I have absolutely no clue, but it makes me more reliant on him. And that means my relationship with him is growing by leaps and bounds. And that, that is just a special season in life. It might be confusing and panicking when we don't know what we're doing, but relying on on Jesus is the place to be. That's the safest place we are is when we're in his will and we're growing. So I am thankful for this season and I hope you have been enjoying the thankfulness of this month of prompts. And next month, we're going to be doing an Advent series. So I hope you'll tune in for that and join in and create your own Advent pieces each week. And I will see you again next Sunday for another video. Have a great week. God bless you.